the first fund I'll talk on is robotics AI. Um, in terms of the thematic here, what you've got is aging populations grow, uh, globally. Uh, over the next couple of decades, the ratio of non-working people to working people is expected to double. So it's not a matter of robots taking over people's jobs. It's a matter of if we don't get robots up and running, there's not going to be anyone to do the work and keep GDP high. So um, the very strong predicted growth in the robotics AI sector. Um, those uh, worker shortages are expected to lead to li rising labour costs and obviously robots can help in that regard. The third factor is just pure performance improvements. Robots are proving more precise, um, they've got less waste, improved quality and higher output um, than what humans can often provide. Um, so this new fund that we've got, RBTZ, robots as we call it, covers every key aspect of robotics. Um, you can see them all there from industrial, non-industrial, driverless cars, um, artificial intelligence. So the uh, ticker itself, RBTZ, 57 basis points. Um, and uh, looking at a one year forward PE here of about 20 times and one year EPS growth of about 22 times. So fairly strong growth and not significantly pricier than uh, just the, the, the broad market. Some of the key stocks you can see there, again, I'll leave you to look through those in your own time. And uh, the performance uh, is what it is, but you can see it there. Um, I've just got here, there is a, another robotics exposure available in the market. I think it's important to touch on the, the key differences there. RBTZ is 25 basis points cheaper. Um, the other key difference is the number of holdings. RBTZ is significantly more concentrated with 36 holdings relative to 87. So some people might look at that and say, well, I'm giving up stock diversification in RBTZ relative to the uh, alternative, and that would be correct. But those other 50 odd stocks would not pass the RBTZ filter because their proportion of their revenue that's exposed to robotics is so small. So we would argue that by having those extra stocks, you're actually diluting your exposure to the robotics thematic. Um, and we think if you're going to play in a thematic space, you want to actually have maximum exposure to that thematic. The other key difference is RBTZ is market cap weighted. Uh, the alternative is equal weighted. Um, in a thematic space like this, um, there are going to be a lot more, especially an emerging one, there's going to be a lot more losers than there are winners. So we think you need market cap in that space so that you're riding your winners and cutting your losers. In an equal weight scenario, which uh, the alternative has, you're cutting your winners and topping up your losers. So we think a market cap um, rationale is uh, stronger in that space. Next one uh, we've just launched is the Asian Technology and Internet Retailing Tigers, um, ticker Asia. Uh, if we look through the global tech space now, four out of the 10 largest tech companies are actually based out of Asia. Um, so we think this is a really easy way to get exposure to that. There are a number of reasons to invest in Asia, but the key ones I'd highlight is if you look at China, they've got two times the uptake of online shopping that the US market does. And yet their internet penetration is only 50% of the population using the internet as opposed to the US market where 90% of the population uses the internet. So we think there's potential for significant um, growth in number of uh, users of these Asian tech businesses. Um, from a diversification point of view, it has very low correlation to NASDAQ and US technology. So you're not doubling up on exposures that, uh, that you might um, hold through those sorts of uh, things. And looking at the PEs again, um, you're looking at a PE on this sort of exposure one year forward of 10.8 times. Um, that's not far off an emerging markets PE, um, but you're getting 22 times EPS growth on a one year forward basis for some of the biggest tech companies in the world. Um, ticker there, Asia, um, as I said, fees 67 basis points, and you can see some of the companies there. You can run through the details of those in your own time as well. Uh, same with performance. Uh, hack, this is the one overarching thematic that I think sits above all technology exposures. doesn't matter whether you're talking about computer hardware, software, driverless cars, robotics, AI, contactless payments, every aspect of technology you could possibly think of requires cyber security to ensure that it's, it's a robust platform. Um, and so Hack provides exposure to the largest cyber security companies globally. Um, one year uh, forward uh, PE sitting at uh, 24 times. Um, and I'll let you look through the details later in the interest of time. 
Um, the final one is just NASDAQ. As I said, this has uh, obviously had a bit of a sell-off lately. Um, looking now, it's on a one-year forward PE of 19 times. Um, its historical average has been more sort of 25 to 28 times. So it's looking pretty cheap relative to historical average PEs. Um, and you've got EPS growth of 26%. So that's actually the highest EPS growth of any of the tech exposures that we've covered off on today. Um, and ticker there, NDQ. So look, it's definitely had a few outflows the last couple of weeks, but um, that's definitely stabilised. We'll see whether people buy it for, uh, for the bounce. And I won't uh, go through the fund, but I'll just highlight that we've just launched a global income exposure INCM as well.